Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, it is now 2019 and people are starting to gear into the regular normal routines. And as you start to gear into your regular normal routines and as you think about your goals and your, your dreams for this year, consider once again switching to Linux. Yes, I'm gonna keep doing this until everybody switches to Linux. You will switch to Linux. You will switch to Linux. Okay, anyway, uh, what we're going to do here is we are going to do five tips to trying Linux in 2019. Maybe you're still stuck on your Mac, you're still stuck on your Windows machine, whatever it happens to be. We are going to go ahead and walk through some basic tips to help you get used to running Linux. So let's go ahead and get started. Number one, do your homework. You don't want to jump into anything without a plan and jumping into Linux is a major deal. And so you want to take it slow and you want to do some learning. Start by doing a little bit of research, following along on some channels, watch some videos, and then start asking what type of things are you looking in for in a Linux operating system. If you're coming from the Mac environment, you might do something like elementary, which has more of a Mac-y type layout. You might also look at Zorin, which has the ability to flip back and forth. Uh, a deepened desktop is good. Eh, I'm a little hairy on that deepened desktop right now, but nevertheless, it does have a good Mac type feel to it. So those are decent options you could consider. Those coming from a Windows system, Linux Mint, Cinnamon, anything running Cinnamon really, but Linux Mint is the best implementation of Cinnamon, and of course they created it, so it generally works best as most integrated. There's other things like Ubuntu Mate, or if you're a little bit more adventurous, you might try something like a Solace, which has a slightly different desktop environment, but is certainly uh, worthy of consideration. But number one, you wanna start by doing your homework, watching some channels, reading up on some information, and, and get a feel for which distribution you might like to try. Number two, examine your software needs. Not every application you're currently using on your Windows or Mac is going to be able to run on Linux. Some of them might, it depends on what you're running. But the bigger question is not, can I get X application running on Linux? The question is, what things do I need to do and which applications on Linux will allow me to do that? The reason that's a significant question to ask and why it's different is that when you are looking at running your uh, your applications, Linux has more software for it than you can possibly imagine. There is any application, anything you need to do, anything at all. You don't need Word, you might need to write a Word document. So in that case, you want to look at something like LibreOffice, which is an entire free operating suite. It has Word documents, spreadsheets, it has your presentations. It has your full databasing functionalities. There are even a lot of applications this package has that are not in Microsoft Office. And you don't have to pay a lot of money. Like if you needed to use Access Database, you're paying a lot of money. You can do that for free on LibreOffice. Absolutely amazing. So don't ask what software I have to use. Ask what do I need to get done and how to do it on Linux. Now, there are absolutely some cases where you're going to need to stick with your Windows or your Mac. There's, It's just a reality based on our jobs or whatever else. But if it's your personal life and you're like, well, I need to write documents to people, you don't have to use Word. You can do this with LibreOffice. If you're sending those documents to people with Word, simply save it in LibreOffice as a doc file. It works just fine. Same thing if you are if you need to edit images, maybe your hobbies, whatever else. You don't need Photoshop. GIMP and Krita will do anything that Photoshop will do. They are very amazing full feature applications. Checking email, yeah, you got Thunderbird. Web browsers, we got them all. Any web browsers you can get for any other system, well, except Safari, but who uses that anyway? You can run on Linux, but there are great op options uh, outside of that. If you really like the like the the look of Safari. Hey, Epiphany on um, uh, Elementary looks just like Safari. It doesn't suck as bad though. So, you know, there's a lot of those options. So examine the software needs that you have. Number three, all of those software packages I just showed you, you can test on your current system without actually having to switch to Linux. So if you need to do writing files or, or doing spreadsheets or databasing or image editing or checking email, 
you can actually install all of these applications that we just showed you on your existing system. Head on over to the download tab, pull this menu down. Of course, you can't see the menu uh, because of the way my screen system works here. But inside of this, let me actually change it to a view that you can actually view that. One moment, please. There you are. Now, if you pull this guy down, you can see that you can download this. These are just two different types of Linux applications. Here is for your Mac. Here is for your 32-bit and your 64-bit Windows system. So no matter what you're using, you can go ahead and download the applications and install it. Same thing with GIMP. You can come on over here, click on your download page. Here's your uh, Linux. Here's your Mac. Here's your Windows. And then I think this all will just kind of show you all the options. I don't know. They're around there somewhere, but you can download them. Same thing with Krita. Uh, come on over here. Um, we have here is for Linuxy stuff. Oh, down here on this guy, we have our 64 bit windows, 32 bit windows, uh, portable windows. So here's your difference your installer versus your portable. Your portable will run without actually installing it. That's a really fun feature. Here's our Mac OS installer and then the app image for Linux. So you have these options as well. Of course, I pulled out Thunderbird. Um, you can actually come on over here and click on your systems and languages and you know any language that you need, your Windows, your Mac, your Linux uh, 32, and your Linux 64. So all of these are options that you have when you are considering switching to Linux. You don't even have to dump your current system. The first thing you wanna do is figure out what tasks you need to do with your system and then install these applications on your existing one, get used to them. If you know how to use these applications and you take the time to learn them, take that learning curve time, then when you need to switch over to Linux, all of these are native applications and you'll be like, oh, I already know how to do all this and your experience will be completely flawless. Number four, on to actually testing Linux. First step is use virtualization if you can. So what is virtualization? Virtualization is utilizing a virtual box. Now there are a few different applications that will all do this. Virtual box is the one I use. There are some other ones that might actually perform better. Uh, people will tell you in the comments down below. Um, the reason I use VirtualBox is because of the licensing. It's a licensing thing. This channel is monetized. I would have to have a commercial license of the VirtualBox alternatives to show you how to do things. I use VirtualBox. Now, for home testing of Linux, if somebody in the comments says, try this out instead of VirtualBox, Hey, go ahead and use it because, uh, and I forget the name of it. It's, it, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I know what it is and it has, it is completely free to download and use and set up. I just couldn't show it to you on a video. I could show you what it is if I could remember, but, uh, virtualization though, as long as your operating system can support virtualization, this is a great way to test out Linux because you don't have to do anything. So, uh, what does virtualization looks like? Well, what it looks like is I can come on over here and you can see I have a variety of different guys here. So I talked, of course, about Linux Mint 19 uh, or Linux Mint Cinnamon is what I talked about. This is an entire operating system which is going to run the exact same thing right here on my computer and I can tinker with it. I can install stuff to it. I can remove stuff from it. I can just do all of the experimentation that I might want to do without actually having to mess up my current hard drive. All it takes is one extra application and VirtualBox is, once again, like the other applications we looked at, completely cross-platform. It is going to work for you whether you are uh, on Windows, on Linux, or on Mac. This is an absolute option to use. Okay, so here we are running a full-fledged Linux operating system right on top of my existing operating system. This will run just as flawlessly whether you're using a Windows, whether you're using a Mac. Uh, this layout, of course, is very much like the Windows platform. It's going to look about the same. It's going to behave about the same. It's easy to configure, and there's a lot of tools included in this system to help you uh, decide what you want to use. So virtualization will absolutely help you to install Linux and test Linux without actually messing up your system. And number five, you can install Linux on a little flash drive. You can pick these up from any store. 
uh, for just a few bucks. Make sure you do get a USB 3.0. 2.0 is going to run too slow, but a 3.0, you can install Linux on this. Now, I am not an advocate of installing and dual booting your Linux right next to your Windows install on the same hard drive. You're asking for problems when you do that, and I, it's, it's not a good way to do it. What I prefer to do, and I have videos about this, is you pull out the hard drive on your existing computer. Um, well, first, there's a couple steps. Again, I'm going to link some videos here. You can watch these. You want to download the distribution from the website. You want to put it onto one USB drive, and then you're going to take the hard drive out of your computer after you shut the computer down. Take the hard drive out of the computer. You're going to plug in the image that you've burnt to a USB drive. The computer should boot off of that. Again, check the details in the videos for all of the little nuances. And then plug in your USB 3 drive and install Linux onto this guy here. You can set your BIOS up so that if this guy is plugged into your system, it's booting onto Linux. If it's this is pulled out of your system, it's going to boot to your existing operating system. Those are the best ways to try Linux in 2019. So have a look at the links. I'll put some videos in the description down below and here on YouTube. I will go ahead and card the links. Um, BitChute guys, take a look at the, um, uh, the links in the description down below to get some more in-depth videos about each of these individual topics. So thanks for coming along and I hope that you enjoy 2019 and Linux. Thank you for making it to the end of this Switch to Linux video. You can have a look at another video right on over here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel or to Think Life Media, which is my own personal support page. Thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.